the brain are interconnected by axons extending from one region to another, which enables the whole brain to function coordinately. Axons connecting distant regions reside in white matter and are structurally organized by bundling into fascicles known as uh, cerebral tracts. So in these articles, they uh, report the generation of a model tissue mimicking a cerebral tract. So they first uh, formed spheroids from human-induced pluripotent, uh, pluripotent stem cells with a lower digit cultural vessel, and they differentiate in them from, uh, for 25 days into neurons and three into three-dimensional spheroids and after differentiations the spheroids were transferred into a custom-made culture device inside this micro device at first the spheroids extended uh, axons within the uh, chambers after around uh, 10 days of culture inside the micro device uh, and that would be around uh, 35 days total of culture axons from two spheroids reach the middle of the micro channels. Around 25 days of culture in the micro device, that would be 50 days total, the axons reach the spheroids in the opposite side and form a single and straight fascicle within the micro channel. The resultant structure consists of two mutually connected parts, an axon fascicle and a spheroid of neurons. When spheroids were placed on a culture surface without uh, our culture device, the spheroids failed to form a single fascicle of axons between them and instead extend the uh, axons in all directions. So uh, they employed the strategy of providing only special instructions to generate this uh, cerebral tract model tissue. The efficiency of generating a tissue with a robust axon fascicle was about 50% at day uh, 50, but by treating spheroids with a DNA synthesis inhibitor, for 24 hours at day 25, the efficiency of action fascicle formation increased, suggesting that uh, overproliferation within spheroid suppresses action fascicle formation, presumably due to construction of uh, the channels within the uh, microchannels. So, after the action fascicle was formed, the cerebral tract model tissue was retrieved from the cultural vessel for different assessments. And the data indicated that the fascicle structure was made of axons and not cell bodies or dendrites. The surface and cross-section uh, observation of the fascicle revealed that the axons were tightly packed and organized in uh, parallel. They uh, next compare axon fascicles generated from one spheroid with uh, axon fascicles generated between two spheroids. And the axon fascicle structure was formed in both cases suggesting that a uh, axon spontaneously extended into the micro device and formed the fascicle without being uh, affected by the target cells. And interestingly, they noted that the axons did not disperse uh, even in the wide neck region of the cultural device when there were two uh, spheroids. Whereas when there was one uh, spheroid, they formed an axon fascicle with a dispersed ending. When an spheroid was replaced in a chamber and a glass bead, uh, sorry, when an spheroid was placed in a chamber and a glass bead was placed on the other chamber instead of an spheroid, the dispersion of the axon extended into the chamber with a glass bead was not reduced compared to the axon extended in the empty chamber. This suggests that the axon extending uh, in re reciprocal direction physically interacts to facilitate the formation of uh, this ba bundle. Next, they uh, assess the electrophysical, electrophysiological functionality of the neurons using calcium indicator dye. When one spheroid was electrically stimulated, the axon fascicle and the connected distal spheroid responded with a calcium surge, indicating that the action potential induced in the stimulation propagated to the axon fascicle and the connected spheroid. Strikingly, the calcium signal of the distal spheroid responded slightly slower when the spheroid directly simulated, and this implies that the distal spheroid took extra time to fire action potentials owing to a delay of the transmission or synapt synaptic transmissions. When the axon fascicle was cut, the distal spheroid did not respond to simulation, indicated that the axon fascicle transducing 
transduce this action potential to the connected spheroid. And uh, finally, the cerebral tract formation can be uh, disturbed by different factors. L1 cam gene produces L1 cell addition molecule that facilitates axons to interact with each other. And axons from the L1 cam knockdown cells exhibited significantly lower ratio of axons assembled into a bundle that the control cell. This data suggested that uh, the axon fast conformation processes in our tissue is relevant to cerebral tract formation in vivo and that the tissue can be used to model developmental uh, diseases related to the cerebral tract. That would be all, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, in this occasion, uh, I am going to talk about um, this uh, microfluidic for in vivo imaging of neural and behavioral activity in uh, C elegans. Um, in this in this occasion, the authors uh, design uh, two different type of chips in order to see uh, what is the response of the of the C elegans uh, uh, to response uh, against the uh, uh, different uh, it, they try to evaluate two different neurons the first neuron they they want to uh, uh, the neuron that is uh, ava ava neurons that is uh, responsible for movements um, and the first chip that they uh, that they design is 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 that that that's this this chip um what is the idea the idea is uh, in the middle uh, uh, they put the the c elegance in this part and the idea is to uh, trap the elegant and uh, try to uh, avoid the movement vertical movement the c elegance only have the ability to move the the tail and the head and they use uh, fluorescence uh, because this uh, C elegance is, uh, is genetic modified with a, um, uh, with a gene that produce uh, fluorescence with there are uh, activity with calcium. It means that uh, when the C elegance move, uh, they uh, are able to uh, get the image with uh, um, with the uh, with the fluorescence uh, with uh, activity of calcium, they they are interested in analyze uh, uh, what is the uh, the movement uh, of C elegans in uh, for example when when they move to the forward or when move to the back, and uh, they uh, in the letter there is reported that the uh, movement of the elegans is like a wave that. Uh, that uh, begin in the tail when when he moves to the forward and he and when it moves to the back, um, they they start the the move in the in the in the head. Uh, and they use a different uh, C elegans uh, around uh, uh, thirty uh, elegans and they uh, uh, characterize the movement. And they they notice a two difference between uh, use microfluidic devices and uh, agar agar plate. The the only difference is that it's very repetitive the movement in um, in the in the in the chip. Uh, they assume or they propose that it's because of the uh, C elegans uh, feel trapped and they try to move uh, more quickly. That is the reason that. Uh, they they say that it's not natural movement, but the the the, the idea is to uh, characterize uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, intensity of the movements with the tail or with the head, and this is the the graphic that they they get according to the intensity. They don't fall different. Uh, uh, they don't find a, a signif significant difference between uh, the tail of the of the head. 
and also they they propose a different uh, in order to see if it's the if it's the chain they use H H H G G F P and they also they don't find uh, uh, too much difference. Uh, okay, uh, the next um, the next chip that they use is in order to evaluate another uh, uh, kind of of uh, neurons that is response or there are uh, they are related with olfactory sense of the C elements. This is the design of the microfluidic device. Uh, like this I, in this part they put the the C elegance and the idea is the C elegance feel attracted and they only uh, are the they it are only able they it, oh, sorry it is able only to to like you see in the picture uh, to uh, if, uh, have this tiny portion of the C elegance uh, uh, attracted in the microfluidic device and the idea is to uh, introduce a uh, liquid of flow, uh, uh, constant flow, uh, with a, a stimulus, uh, with a stimulus, and without the stimulus. And they also use the same technique that uh, I already told you. Uh, wow. Use the calcium, a fluorescent calcium, with this, uh, with this elegance in order to see what is the response of the uh, olfactory uh, sense with which uses stimulus and without the stimulus um, this is the graphic that they sorry this is the graphic that they they uh, they get uh, uh, the, the group uh, control is, is obviously uh, the plane and they use two different uh, times in order to see what is the response of the activity of these neurons and they get this uh, activity and they characterize what is the uh, what is the difference between the control the the time of the exposure of the of the um, stimulation and uh, it's interesting uh, that they they conclude that it's possible to boil uh, to build a, a microfluidic device that is uh, attracted and, and uh, get this information because it's 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 quite difficult it's quite difficult to get this information the, uh, and they use this uh, technique in order to to get the this uh, to characterize this olfactory response of the C elegans. Okay, this is all. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, please, you turn off uh, your microphone. It's a noise. It's a Good morning, everyone. Um, today, um, I would like to um, talk about uh, this topic, electrotaxis on chip to quantify neutrophil migration towards electrochemical gradients. So, um, electrotaxis uh, is the... Um, it's a guided migration of cells and cells migrate for example when they um, when there is a, a wound so cells migrate for healing and also uh, for um, to present an immune response uh, so here in this paper the authors use neutrophils and the cell line uh, that is um, as a model, is this differentiated leukemia cancer cell? It's DHL16. So, this is the cell that they are going to use. And they are going to test three biologically relevant conditions. So, first, the first condition is the DC electric field, direct current. And then, um, the second one is the parallel chemical gradient and electric field. So, they are going to apply a, a gradient of a um, and a chemical and also the electric field and the third condition is this perpendicular chemical gradient and electric field so they are going to uh, to test the electric field combined with the, another chemical agent in this case it's going to be like a competition so they want to see if the cells are attracted to the chemical or they prefer to go in the direction of the electric field okay so they also try different uh, electric fields and uh, the ones that are, for example, in the, in, that we can see in the tissues, uh, they are 
in the range of uh, from 40 to 100 um, volts. And then here you see, let's, let's see the, the first figure. So here we have a uh, illustration that represents the electrotaxis, for example, in the tissue when we have an oud, this is the, the oud field, it's going to attract the cells there so that they heal the tissue. So here we see the in the in the second row you see the schematics of the microfluidic devices that they design. So there is a central chamber where they are going to culture the cells and then we have in the above we have the cathode and below we have the anode. Then on the right, we have a media um, well, and on the left, we have also a media, okay? So uh, we are going to, to see how the cells migrate uh, to the cathode, okay? Also in the, in, this, in the column B, you see the perpendicular and competing electrotaxis and chemotaxis are going to be assessed. So it's the same, but here in the in the media, we are going to also use the pro-inflammatory chemotaxic agent. So here it is, LTB4. And for the other, for the third situation, the parallel and synergistic electrotaxis and chemotaxis, they are going to uh, also include this other agent. It is the same that the bacteria use. So when there is an infection, there are, uh, for example, this um, formil metion a leucine, um, uh, yeah, that's another amino acid. Um, I cannot, cannot tell, yeah, I don't remember it here. Okay, so the, with this um, agent that the bacteria release, it's also a chemiotractant for the cells. And then we have these three models, and let's see what happened. So here we see the cells. Um, it, this is a 10x. A image from the microscope, then we have here the architecture of the microfluidic device. You can see how these uh, electrodes are connected, and we see also the um, how the electric potential is distributed with this simulation. Okay, so in this um, essay, they, they measure the the number of cells that migrated per channel. So here we see that a few cells go to, um, to the anode, the majority go to the cathode, and there is um, a few that go to the media. And then what happens when we mixed, um, then when we mix the, how is the electrotaxis in this uh, competing situation? So there is a chemotractant and also the electric field. So there is a few cells that go to the anode, the majority go to the cathode. And uh, when, we, when we use this chemotractant, then we see a significant uh, number of cells that are directed there, okay? And in the last situation, you see here how um, what happens when we use this synergistic effect. So there is a chemotractant and, and the electric field. So here, um, the majority of cells, you see how they go uh, to the cathode and it's, it's like six-fold uh, times more than when there is just a electrical current. So they also measure the velocity of the cells and in each of these situations. And here you see that when there is just, a, the, the cells move in a, a 7.9 micrometers per minute, a, when there is no chemical gradient, it means just current, the, they are exposed to electric field. And what happens when it's the chemoattractant there, the, because it's a competing, so the uh, speed is going to be, uh, it's going to decrease. That's why it's 2.9 micrometers per minute. And finally, when there is the chemoattractant that uh, it's a synergistic situation with the, with the electric field, the, the velocity is 14.8 microns per minute. So with this uh, model, they, uh, can control uh, the movement of the cells, how the cells migrate, and they they can uh, guide the cells. So this could be um, a treatment for to a study how to uh, to facilitate the migration of cells in a in a direction that that we want or or not. 
Okay, I wanted to show you a video, but uh, I think my time is over. So uh, you can watch the, the supplementary uh, videos. Okay, I just show you one. Sorry that I have used more than the time that it's allowed. Um, so here is the, the cells, how they uh, migrate to the cutoff, and also uh, they are attracted by this chemical and here, here you see how uh, the cells, how, that this is why the velocity of the cells diminishes because the chemotract and the perpendicular, they are going in, the, in this perpendicular orientation. Okay, the other videos are also very interesting, so I suggest you to uh, look for them. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, uh, this is my presentation, automated on chip rapid uh, microscopy, phenotyping, and, and shorting of C. elegans. Um, um, in this article, uh, microscopy, phenotype, visual screens are applied in combination with genetics. Um, uh, the microfluidic system has been designed together with software allowing high performance. Um, the microchip is able to control the temperature with uh, the software integrates image and classify the words. Um, in this part, um, uh, present an integrated microsystem to perform a high throughput microscopy for classification base or phenotype. Um, uh, uh, the chip uh, use uh, valves to control a uh, suspension of nematodes and present several uh, characteristics that allow the operation. A system was uh, designed to control the entry process of analysis and classification of words based on many uh, characteristics. Um, so, our autom automation enables the the chip to highlight uh, six features to ensure consistent and, and reliable operation. Um, the method loading is first regulated by a simple regulation design compared to using a, a full load. Um, okay. Uh, this part, uh, uh, the design of the system for Rapid microscopy allows the words to be manipulated by um, a simple loading a scan phenotype. Um, uh, First, a single word is automatically loaded on the chip uh, with constant uh, flow driving by pressure. Uh, then the word is, uh, is immobilized. A multidimensional image of, of words are acquired on the chip. Uh, then the phenotype is seen and the images are classified for their respective analyze. Um, okay. Okay. Um, in this part, the quickly analyze expression patterns on a, a large scale. Uh, this analyze is a common technique in genetic. Uh, Gene expression patterns and quickly test in a world population. In this strain, a ring a Florence protein is expressed in, in sensory neurons. Um, Florence is observed in the, in the phones on the, on the intestine. In this part, in part B, in this, in this experiment, the words move freely. Um, Images are acquired at ambient with uh, 10. Uh, 10 magnification, uh, 10x magnification, uh, image processing software to, to this, uh, to this uh, specific neurons. And, and this part. Okay, and this part um, uh, determine if the word had the will type phenotype, uh, the image were analyzed by flattening and, and threshold holding. The words were ordered according to the tail phenotypes. 
And the uh, conclusion, this chip is used with two different modes uh, through photolithography process to create the warm loading uh, layer and the control layer. And this system is independent of the microscope and the camera is compatible with all typical microscopy configuration, uh, such as a simple uh, microscope or a stereoscope. Thanks. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Um, I am continuing the, this, the, the topic of the last week. Um, I'm talking about uh, uh, the organ of chips and the application on the hips and in, in different uh, strategies uh, for uh, uh, micro devices and, and, and other uh, structures for construct and the 3D printer, okay? Um, for me, it's uh, it's very interesting because um, the I have several um, application and the uh, improve the, the the classic uh, the conventional uh, cell culture and, and organ culture and, and microorgan culture. Okay, um, but uh, you can see the the, the comparate uh, the different strategies for for. Uh, understand uh, the physiological or a uh, reaction on gene expression on the uh, several uh, behavior uh, uh, cells or tissues but uh, in in the organ chips in the uh, they uh, many advantage uh, for uh, its uh, control uh, the, the the difference um variables in in this case uh, you can see uh, uh, for me this is the uh, the most important and, and 11 control over cell ar architecture but uh, the behavior cells is uh, depend uh, it's the main event uh, of uh, architect uh, this uh, how a grow in the in, in the culture right and uh, also it is the, the real time uh, organ function allows the possible uh, for example uh, an our uh, system in the uh, take it photos in the in the many photos in in experiment okay uh, also uh, we um, look the the different strategy for uh, understand and the physiological uh, and the uh, behavior uh, cells uh, in uh, different strategies for a cell culture okay and uh, you you can see uh, uh, exist a uh, different micro device and produce is, is a, a lower oxygen uh, for example in in the the, our laboratory for producing the low oxygen use uh, other system. It's a big. It's uh, in this case when when I use micro device uh, use uh, for uh, reduce the oxygen uh, uh, oxygen and uh, uh, can see the the behavior cells in in a culture or reaction for. Uh, different uh, variables in, in the experiment, right? Um, the next, uh, I for me, this is a very important for uh, the the hips and the induced peripotent stem cells. It's a, it's a, it's a powerful tool for, for uh, tasted drugs on the uh, reduced the phases and a reduced and the um, cost or the different uh, uh, strategies for um, proof proof the drugs are uh, you understand uh, in the in the same chip uh, you can see uh, the different um, chambers 
for the the slow uh, organ and and prove the different drugs. Uh, okay. Uh, also, it's uh, um, you can see the different use uh, for for uh, the micro devices or construct the different strategies technology for for make uh, these micro devices on the, for example, uh, medical escape, uh, basic science research, uh, and the different uh, clinical real trials developing and the, uh, many uh, applications for, uh, and the next next decade uh, revolutionize the how uh, make this experiment. Okay, uh, that is all. Thanks. Can you really see my screen? Yes, we see you. Thank you for your confirmation. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to inform you about a deep learning-based algorithm uh, for 2D cell segmentation in microscopic images. Uh, this paper focuses on whole cell segmentation where the cytoplasts appear uh, bright, uh, the background is dark, while the nucle nucleus has no staining. In addition, a uh, deep learning approach was used to learn and predict location of the cells and their nuclei. For example, uh, here, Fewer One provides information about the five simple cell images that show the variability in the appearance of the stains with the cytoplasts. Unlike the nuclei, the cytoplasts uh, show significant variation in the shapes and size, as you can see here. Regarding methods, we can say that the then they don't rely on cell nuclei or, or membrane market for cell segmentation. This figure, figure two, uh, provides information about the two-dimensional uh, cell segmentation algorithm. In step uh, zero, uh, label image, where it used as training set for deep learning. The model uh, is training using image uh, patches to predict uh, three different labels, uh, nuclei, cytoplasm, and background. On the other hand, uh, given an, uh, an unseen image to be segmented, the algorithm proceeds in three steps, as you see here. Uh, step one, deep learning based prediction of uh, nuclei and cytoplasm. Uh, the unseen image are, div are divided into patches we are used to, to create probability uh, map with a range uh, zero, one for the nucleus, cytoplasm, and background. Um, here, figure 3B shows an example of nuclei in yellow and red, um, and cells uh, in blue science prediction map. In a step, uh, in a step two, nuclei seeds detection, uh, a multi-level application of Gaussian blow detector uh, is applied to detect a nuclei with different size, figure 3C uh, shows a uh, nuclear seed segmentation example for the input image in panel A uh, and the nuclei prediction map in the panel B. And in step 3, seed based cell segmentation is achieved in multiple steps, as, as we see here. Uh, the cytoplasm prediction map, uh, C and blue here in in this figure 3B alone is not sufficient to cement the cells. That's why the cemented nuclei uh, were used, as you see here in yellow and red, a seed for the cell segmentation. Uh, regarding uh, evaluation of the classification result, uh, as shown here in table two, the data set uh, one to five were used for training and testing of the deep learning framework to accept the receive, receiver operating curve ROC, the area under the curve AUC, and the accuracy of the nuclei as cell prediction. Now we're going to, to talk about the experimental designs. It was, uh, it was just 
a data set of five cellular size, uh, as well as different types of cell lines and fluorescent markers to identify cell body of, or the cytoplasm. At the same time, uh, a set of grand true segmentation was necessary to train the deep learning model, uh, as, well as, as well as to evaluate the goodness of the segmentation uh, result. About a uh, result were performed for each experiment, the automated two channel ground through segmentation were used for training. And experiment one, the data sets uh, were used from uh, one to five in table two, as we saw, uh, which includes uh, 108 uh, images. In this slide, figure, figure four provides uh, information about segmentation results. Uh, from one to from one to see, uh, we see different stages of cell culture. On the right column, we can see segmentation results using the learning based approach. On the left column, uh, semi automated ground through segmentation. Um, bottom uh, and the bottom row show close up of the area in the white box. Different cell contours are shown in different colors. On the other hand, uh, Figure 5a show a histogram of the cell level quality measure, which show uh, 0 0.87 average cell segmentation quality when compared to the semi-automated ground through segmentation. And figure B shows that the ROC core uh, suggests a good performance in identifying both nucleant cells with AUC larger uh, than a 0 0.95 and ACC of a 0 0.91 and a 087 for nucleon cells. In this slide, uh, table three shows the details of the segmentation quality assessment. The average image level quality uh, scores were at 80, uh, 0, 85 and 0, uh, 86. After that, the, the two channel segmentation was compared with what was used for training and then resulted with an average image level score uh, of 0, 90. And finally, uh, regarding experiment three, uh, fewer, fewer six shows an example comparing uh, single channel deep learning based segmentation to the two channel segmentation for one image. Um, on the right column, segmentation results using deep learning based approach, and the left column, semi aromatic ground through segmentation. Um, finally, uh, bottom row shows close up of the area in the in the white box, different cell contours are shown in different colors. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. Can you see my screen? Yes, we see. Thank you, Mika. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> the paper that I will explain today is titled multi Sync Single Cells Snapshot. Real multiply independent trajectories to drug tolerance in a melanoma cell slide. The aim of the study is to identify cell trajectories in the single cells approach by anal analyzing analysis, fluorescence microscopy image in melanoma cells obtained from cancer patients. Okay. Excuse me, my, my neighbors. is working to the, to the world. In the cells were cultured in the microfluidic device with microarray of cellular DAM genetic materials. Image were taken by fluorescence microscopy and processed with with um, MATLAB Program. They tag proteins and following proteins and follow their trajectories over time. The analysis of the parts 
they also carry out using a theoretical approach inspired by thermodynamic by thermodynamics in, in which equilibrium cells state are defined. The cellular state, the cellular state involves cellular chains at the biological levels and transition occur at certain critical points. Uh, these figures show the uh, twice state, state one and negative and negative values and state two and positive positive uh, values and tipping point is the critical point of transitions uh, between twice state. In the result result in um, is here. In figures 1a, they compensate drug adaptation in individual normal cells. They zero correspond to the control cells and they 1, 3, and 5 correspond to drug treatment. The cellular state are, are from drug sensitive cells state here to drug tolerant cells state. Detection in correspond, correspond to metabolic detection and pro, prote, protein detection and the single cell chamber on microfluidic device. Uh, the uh, figures B correspond to heat map representation of integrated proteomic and metabolic analysis that database glucose and other and, and, and proteins. Each row, row, each row corresponds to individual cells and each column correspond the number of days after starting drug treatment. Figure 1C is the violin plot representation of the, of the distribution of the system's set time representative marker across four time points. In point in time, that is one, that is zero, one, three, and five, and the G axis correspond to the natural logarithm of measured market levels. In figure two, in figure two, these, these figures show the individual cells, individual cells using flow map program we transfer to the proteins marked to the individual cells mm -hmm. and the color corresponds to the um, times uh, to the times uh, the control cells and drug um, cell the uh, drug uh, treatment and die one three and five and the cells migrate to the uh, other position in figure three, we can see we can see the influence score of the two regulatory models identified from surface analysis that correspond to the theoretical approach. And these these correspond to the tipping point is here, the tipping point, and stage one is is um, here and the state two is here, and the two state you can uh, you can go to the two paths. The upper path is there and lower path. Independent trajectories imply differentiated differentiated biological state.
Thank you.